Wakanda established itself as one of the most powerful nations in the world at the end of Black Panther. But because of Thanos' snap, everything was thrown into complete chaos. How did the country handle itself during those pivotal five years, and what's the future look like? Today's video is all about Wakanda and how the snap came at the absolute worst time for them. I mean, sure, it was probably a little inconvenient for every nation, but due to Wakanda's new status as a leading superpower, the snap threatened to undo all the work T'Challa did in his solo movie and open the door to new threats down the line. Well, get ready, because we're about to journey back to the land of armored rhinos. Let's get into it. Can you imagine how horrifying Thanos' snap was? To be just hanging out with friends and then have 50% of them disappear? Or to be having a root canal and then suddenly your dentist turns to dust while he's drilling your teeth? Yeah, scary stuff. But besides the traumatic and devastating loss, we really haven't discussed the political situation of the MCU after an event like this. Avengers Endgame skipped over a lot of the overall ramifications of the snap in favor of things like cool time heist scenes and Fat Thor. And hey, I'm not complaining. I would much rather watch Fat Thor yell at online trolls than watch a bunch of world leaders discuss what's next, but there is one exception to this. I am going crazy wondering what exactly happened to Wakanda in the wake of Thanos' snap. Although the technologically superior Wakanda was where the Avengers made their final stand in Infinity War, it wasn't enough to stop the awesome might of Thanos, and the world paid a heavy price for it. While trying to help Okoye up, T'Challa turned to dust along with presumably half of Wakanda. At least, maybe half? Did we ever find out how the whole half thing worked? Was it literally half the population in true random fashion, or was Thanos thinking more of like every country in the world gets exactly half their population turned to dust? I guess it doesn't really matter. But we did see a lot of Wakandan soldiers turn to dust, and that was a major bummer. So here's the big question. What was the power structure like after the snap? Not only did we see T'Challa disappear in front of our eyes, but it was later confirmed that Shuri turned to dust as well. Which means that there was no logical next person in line for the throne. But there were certainly a few contenders. I would argue that the most obvious choice was Okoye. She was the leader of T'Challa's security team and basically his right-hand man, a uh, woman. In Endgame, we see her officially within the Avengers ranks as she reported to Black Widow about the state of the world. Does this mean that she was in charge? Not necessarily. Just because she's a powerful warrior and now officially an Avenger doesn't mean she wanted to lead Wakanda in this crazy time. Alright, who else? Well, although T'Challa and Shuri turned to dust, we know that Ramonda survived. And I have no doubt Ramonda would make an excellent Queen of Wakanda. She's calm under pressure, but she also isn't afraid to be fierce when the situation calls for it. But she never seemed to have a desire to officially lead in Black Panther. And she also just lost both of her children in an instant. That may not have put her in a good place to be the leader of Wakanda. There are two other strong possibilities for Wakanda's new leader, M'Baku and Nakia. M'Baku had already challenged for the throne before, and now that his separate tribe seems to be Wakanda's main military force, it would make sense for him to take over the throne. But on the other hand, although Nakia didn't seem interested in the throne in Black Panther, she was a person of honor who wanted to help out the world with Wakanda's amazing technological advancements. Would she have stepped up to challenge for the throne in order to honor T'Challa's mission of social outreach? These are the questions we want answered. And yes, even though we were all heartbroken to see some of our favorite heroes in the entire franchise turn to dust in front of our eyes, it wasn't that long before we got to see them all return. Okay, that's a lie. That year-long wait between Infinity War and Endgame was the longest year of my life. Mostly because, man, we made a lot of theory videos in that year. But uh, now that everything's back to normal, it's time to deal specifically with the fallout of the snap. And Wakanda is actually in a very dangerous position. Like, if you look at Spider-Man Far From Home, the aftermath of the snap was played more as a joke. The biggest thing Peter and friends had to deal with was having to restart their school year. Wacky shenanigans ensue! But uh, in Black Panther's case, it's incredibly different. Although it was almost instantaneous for T'Challa between the time he was dusted and when he came back, his nation was without him for five whole years. 
That's an insane time away from something. Just think where you were five years ago and marvel in all that has changed since then. So T'Challa is essentially returning to a nation that's moved on and has probably become loyal to whoever is leading them now. And what if that person is someone like M'Baku, who may not agree with T'Challa's attempts at social outreach and reversed course? Plus, Wakanda has to be in an incredibly weakened state right now. At the end of Black Panther, there was a major coup between what looked like half of Wakanda as some people fought for Killmonger while some people fought for T'Challa. That had to have been a massive depletion of their ranks. And then, two years later, there was the humongous Battle of Wakanda, where the Avengers teamed up with Black Panther's army to fight Thanos' crew. This was a fun scene, packed with our heroes kicking butt with a series of cool one-liners. But what about everyone else? Even though our heroes all survived that initial onslaught, you think every no-named Wakandan soldier walked away from that last battle? I don't care how strong those soldiers were, there's no way they all survived that wave of vicious alien dog creatures. And after that battle, boom! Suddenly, half the soldiers turned to dust. And as soon as they were brought back, they were thrust into another huge final battle against Thanos where they looked to make up a majority of the forces. Again, if you don't have a cool superhero name or some incredible power, chances are you didn't walk away from that battle. How horrible would that be? Imagine being gone for five years only to reappear, be thrust into another battle, and then fall there. So if you take all that under consideration, how powerful do you think Wakanda's army is now that Thanos got a taste of his own medicine? They have to have like, what, maybe 12 guys and one armored rhino left? And that's just talking about their numbers. I haven't even gone into how they lost their biggest battle advantage yet. If you know anything about Wakanda, you know their technology is seriously advanced. Like, I would hate to be in a science fair against someone from Wakanda. That's like an automatic loss. But on top of T'Challa turning to dust, we can't forget that their leading science officer and one of the smartest people in the entire world, Shuri, also turned to dust. She seemed to be the one in charge of using vibranium to upgrade all of Wakanda, and I want to give her major props for making Wakanda what it was. But without her? I can't imagine that there were huge technological breakthroughs during that five-year time. It also completely destroyed their credibility when it came to what T'Challa wanted to do at the end of Black Panther. The movie wrapped up with Black Panther opening up Wakanda to the world and even creating an outreach center in the United States. But just when it seemed they would make progress with it, Thanos arrived and screwed everything up. Is Wakanda still one of the world's leading superpowers now that their army is mostly depleted, their king is in the process of winning back his throne from a people who have moved on, and their head of technological advancement was gone for a full five years? Yeah, Wakanda is in an extremely tough position going forward as it works to rebuild and re-establish itself to its former glory. So what does this mean for Wakanda's future? The once powerful nation will probably bounce back now that everything's back to normal. But how long will that take and how will it affect their ultimate mission? You know who's a real big jerk in the MCU? General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, who pops up any time the MCU needs a government authority figure to cause problems. He has always been afraid of outside threats and unknown superpowers, so how do you think he reacted when he found out that the seemingly dirt-poor nation of Wakanda actually was one of the strongest, most powerful nations in the entire world? And imagine his blood pressure when he found out that Wakanda wanted to work in America with their new social outreach program. Yeah, that doesn't seem like something he'd be too thrilled about, so T'Challa needs to be weary. Before, he was able to negotiate from a place of strength, but now that he has to rebuild everything, there may be outside forces who don't want to see Wakanda regain what it lost. Or worse, there might be outside forces who want to take what Wakanda has to offer. Now, the whole world probably knows that Wakanda has a a massive supply of vibranium. It's only a matter of time before someone decides to try to take it, and now would be the perfect opportunity. I mean, think about it. Would you attack Wakanda when it's at full strength, or would you wait for the perfect moment to strike? 
This could be the thinking of other nations, and maybe the seeds are already planted. In Endgame, Okoye reported on an underwater earthquake. Although this line was dismissed by the writers and directors, many fans took this as a reference to Namor and the lost city of Atlantis. If the MCU is gearing up to introduce the underwater kingdom, then Wakanda needs to watch its back. Namor would make the perfect antagonist in Black Panther 2. And it's easy to see a plot where Namor wants to steal the vibranium in order to exact revenge on the world for all the recent horrifying events that took place. How would T'Challa balance trying to regain the trust of his kingdom after five years away while simultaneously trying to help the rest of the world with their amazing technology, and at the same time dealing with an angry fish king who wants to attack and steal everything away from Wakanda? Those are some incredible stakes, and I really hope the MCU follows through on them. Because I'll say it again, the snap hasn't really been explored on a bigger level. Spider-Man Far From Home played it off more as a joke and didn't really dive into the ramifications of such a massive event. Black Panther 2 gives the MCU a perfect way to really address this issue head on. I can only hope that the nation survives it. I mean, I'm sure it will. Wakanda has Shuri back, which means everything will now be okay. Oh, and I guess T'Challa being back is good news too. He is the Black Panther and all. But uh, no matter what, the whole nation has a lot of work to do. So, how do you think Wakanda will have changed since T'Challa has been away? Do you think that there was a power struggle between M'Baku and Ramonda? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that like button while you're there. Ooh, and while you're there, be sure to click on that big red subscribe button and we'll send you your very own personal armored rhino. I'm sorry, what? Okay, uh, I'm told that that won't happen, but you should still subscribe anyway. Thanks for watching CBR.